In the past, we used to have people coming here to the monastery this time of year to escape the holidays. Here there's no mention of the holidays, no mention of Christmas. Almost nothing to remind you that there is such a thing. No Christmas carols, no Santa Claus. And people found that more than just refreshing. It was an island of sanity. Now, of course, this year they can't come. And so in dealing with our relatives, dealing with friends this time of year, we have to maintain our own island of sanity. And it's good to think of that image of the acrobats. The one where the Buddha says, when you're doing your practice, looking after yourself, you're looking after others. And when you're looking after others, you're looking after yourself. The principle of looking after others by looking after yourself, that's illustrated by the, the acrobats. Each acrobat maintains his or her own sense of balance and helps the other. Unfortunately, there's no image for the other side. The principle of looking after yourself by looking after others. But the Buddha does give an analysis. He talks about the four qualities you've got to bring to your dealings with other people that are also, also strengths in your own mind. And as you regard them as strengths, it makes them a lot easier to deal with difficult people. Sometimes we think the Buddha doesn't appreciate the difficulties of family life. But after all, he escaped. As he said, household life is dusty, confining. He wanted to get out. When he gave that image of the fact that no matter who you meet, it would be very hard to meet somebody who hadn't been your mother at some point, hadn't been your father, hadn't been your sister or brother, or your son or your daughter. And he doesn't make it a, a reason for compassion. He makes it a reason for sangwega. Think of all those different family lives and all the difficulties of family lives. It's enough, he said to make you want to get out. So he did appreciate the difficulties of family life. In fact, two of the qualities he talks about in dealing with other people suggest that you're going to be dealing with difficulties. One is patience and the other is equanimity. They work together, but they're not quite the same thing. Patience is when you don't react to other people's outrageous behavior. You show forbearance. There's a passage in the canon where the devas and the asuras have been fighting for control of heaven, and they finally decide to have a debate. And the debate is precisely on this. Should you show forbearance when other people are mistreating you? And the devas say yes, and the asuras say no. And the asuras' reasoning is that they'll see it as weakness. But the devas say, well, it's your karma, and what other people see as weakness is not the issue. You have to maintain your own purity. And it's in this way that dealing with other people, showing patience and showing equanimity, actually do benefit you, because they become your guarantees that you're not going to overreact, or you're not going to react in unskillful ways. So patience is the not reacting. Equanimity is maintaining an emotional even keel. And both of these require talking to yourself, reminding yourself that you came into this world. If you didn't have your family, didn't have someone to look after you, say you were just lying on the street someplace, you'd die. It's only in the heavens and in the hells that beings are born without parents and can survive perfectly well. But here we need parents, we need relatives, we need people to look after us. As I say, it takes a whole village to raise a child. It's from 
your family that you learn how to speak, how to walk, all your basic skills that you now take for granted. And so when members of the family are difficult, remind yourself that well, you do have a, a debt of gratitude. It makes it easier to put up with some pretty outrageous things that people will do and say. Now we, we can maintain your, your inner stability and not react in unskillful ways, in ways that you're going to later regret. The other two qualities that Buddha talks about are mind is sympathy and goodwill. Goodwill is a simple wish for happiness. Of course, from the Buddhist perspective, that means wishing that other people will behave in a skillful way. And sympathy is when you go more out of your way to show kindness. So when there are opportunities to show some kindness, remind yourself that you're developing a good quality in yourself. The same with goodwill. That's one of the reasons we develop goodwill, is so we can learn how to trust ourselves around difficult people. To make sure that we don't end up saying things and doing things that would be harmful. As long as you're acting on goodwill. If you do say something that ends up causing trouble, it's a lot easier to live with yourself. If you were acting on ill will and you said something and there was a trouble and there was trouble, you tend to get very defensive. And then you don't learn. But making goodwill is your default motivation. If you make a mistake, okay, you realize it didn't come from any ill will. It was, un it was unintended. And it's a lot easier to learn. So as you develop these virtues, patience, equanimity, goodwill, sympathy, they make it a lot easier to deal with other people. And they strengthen good qualities in your own mind. qualities you're going to need in the practice. I've been reading an interesting passage today where the Buddha is talking about good people living together and bad people living together. And bad people living together don't want to correct other people because they're afraid they'll get corrected. And they'll be corrected out of a mind of no sympathy. This is a theme that comes again and again, that one of the benefits of living in a community like this is that if other people see that you're doing something that's unskillful, they can talk to you about it, but they have to talk about it in the right way. And with a mind of sympathy, goodwill, patience, and equanimity, and then you benefit. You've got the advantage of someone else's pair of eyes. And as the Buddha said, if wise people point out your faults. You should see it as a, another person pointing out treasure to you. Because if you don't see your faults, how are you going to solve them? How are you going to make up for them? So you learn how to take criticism well. This is why we have the rules for the monks, that if someone criticizes you, you have to show respect to that person. Now, whether that person's criticism is valid or not, that's another matter. You're not obliged to follow what they say. It has nothing to do with the rules, nothing to do with the Dhamma. Just that person's feelings spouting off. Okay, you learn, learn how to let it go. If you can't let it go. There's a lot of trouble. I was talking to someone the other day who was saying, if someone says something wrong, how can you not let, how can you not correct it? How can you just let it go? If you go around straightening everybody out, one, are they going to be willing to be straightened out? And two, you have no time for yourself. I know in my own case, John Fung gave me more criticism than anybody else I have ever 
been around. And it took a while to develop the right attitude toward it, but I found that I learned. And having gotten criticism from him, it made it a lot easier to listen to criticism from other people. And again, I may not have accepted what they had to say or agreed with what they had to say, but simply the fact that other people were seeing me in a critical light didn't get me all worked up. And so this is a good habit to develop. So when you go out from the monastery and are dealing with other people and your family and your work, you can take criticism a lot more easily. That helps with your patience and equanimity. Now they may be giving you the criticism not with goodwill and not with a sympathetic mind, but you never know. Maybe they mean well. And when you can let the fact of criticism go past you and try to take what's valuable from it and leave the rest, that makes it a lot easier to deal with difficult people in all kinds of difficult situations. It's one of the hardest situations in which to maintain your equanimity or patience is when people start yelling at you, saying really unpleasant things, and you learn to turn off the vacuum cleaner in your mind, the part that takes up the dirt. And you find you can just let it go past. There's almost a physical feeling of sucking it in when you're ordinarily getting upset, and then turning off that vacuum so that things can go past. You can see them go past. So for difficulties, let them go past. Maintain your even keel. And that way you benefit, and the people around you benefit as well. <laughs>